The LA Kings have hired a new assistant coach. I'll tell you why I'm not all that excited about the hire. Plus, what is the Kings' solution in net now and in the future? We talk about that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 17 years and a passionate L.A. Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Well, the L.A. Kings filled out their coaching staff today, and they didn't have to look too far to find this coach. The Kings have hired former Anaheim Ducks assistant Newell Brown, Since we have the time, I will read directly from the press release issued by the Kings today on the hiring. It said, quote, the LA Kings have named Newell Brown as an assistant coach on head coach Jim Hiller's staff. He joins associate coach DJ Smith, assistant coach Derek Johnson, goaltending coach Mike Buckley, and video coordinator Samson Lee. Brown will primarily work with the forwards and focus on the power play. Brown, 62, joined the Kings organization after serving as an assistant coach for the Anaheim Ducks for the last three seasons. 2021 to 24 brown has been an assistant coach in the nhl since the 1996-97 campaign beginning with a two-year stint behind the bench for the chicago blackhawks in total brown brings 27 seasons of coaching experience at the nhl level of the kings including time in chicago 1996 to 98 the columbus blue jackets 2000 to 2004 vancouver canucks 2010 to 2013 and 2017 to 2021 arizona coyotes 2013 to 17 and Anaheim Ducks, 1998 to 2000, 2005 to 2010, and 2021 to 2024, where he helped the club to a Stanley Cup championship in 2007. Under Brown's assistance in Vancouver, the Canucks claimed consecutive President's Trophies in 2010-2011 and 2011-2012, and a Stanley Cup Finals appearance in 2011. Prior to coaching in the NHL, the Cornwall, Ontario native coached the Adirondack Red Wings in the American Hockey League for four seasons, from 1992 to 1996. Brown began his coaching career at his alma mater, Michigan State University, where he helped guide the Spartans to -to back-to-back regular season and CCHA tournament titles in 1988-89 and 1989-90 before taking the helm as head coach of the Michigan Tech Huskies. Brown was selected by the Vancouver Canucks in the eighth round, 198th overall of the 1982 NHL draft. From 1978 to 80, he skated for two seasons for his hometown Cornwall Royals in the QMJA, uh, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League at the time is what it's called, uh, where he helped the Royals capture the 1980 Memorial Cup. Brown went on to register 202 points, 37 goals, 129 assists for 202 points. In 156 collegiate games for the Spartans, he played one season of professional hockey in 1980-45, splitting time between the Fredericton Express of the AHL and the International Hockey League's Muskegon Lumberjacks. So there you go. Everything you ever wanted to know about Newell Brown. Now, clearly, Newell Brown has a wealth of experience. He has had a lot of stops in a lot of different places, including three different stops with the Anaheim Ducks. And I am familiar with his name. I have definitely heard of him before. But when I heard that the Kings were hiring Newell Brown, the first thought I had was about my friend, Doug the Ducks fan. Uh, Some of you might know him as my longtime friend, former college roommate, Doug Stolhand. He is my co-host on the Puck Podcast, and he's my very good friend, and yes, he is a Ducks fan. I hate the Ducks. He hates the Kings. Anyway, we somehow make it work. Um, So I knew if I asked him, he would give me an honest assessment of Newell Brown. So I texted him, and here is what he had to say about Newell Brown, quote, He's a special teams coach who coaches very antiquated systems. The power play is stationary and the PK is passive. The Ducks special teams have been awful for years. And yes, personnel has a part, but they've consistently been awful on both sides of special teams. Ducks fans were universally 
hoping he would be let go after the season. Bad teams can have good special teams. Newell Brown never found a way to get the Ducks even bad. They were awful, end quote. Now, he didn't have to add this part, but I have a pretty strong belief that Doug was quietly snickering that the Kings had just taken that guy off of the Ducks' hands. Now, I trust and respect my friend's opinion. Doesn't mean he's always right, but those were his thoughts on Newell Brown. And let's be honest, Newell Brown was basically just fired by one of the worst teams in the NHL. Now, his contract wasn't renewed, but basically that's the same thing. They didn't call it a firing. They just said that they mutually parted ways. You know, they're going to word it to where it sounds friendly. Um, but the Ducks could have brought him back if they wanted to, and they decided not to. As for the Ducks' power play this past season, they were ranked 24th in the NHL at 17.9%. I'm sure there have been times when Newell Brown has run good power plays in his career. There had to be a few stops, I'm sure. Uh, maybe in Vancouver when they were winning President's Trophies, uh, that they had probably a very good power play. So I don't want to just pick and choose uh, you know, numbers that were bad, but the fact is, is the most recent uh, numbers that we have for him, the job that he did in Anaheim. And again, they were a bad team, but their power play was not very good. And uh, again, Ducks fans, according to my friend, Doug are very happy. He's no longer with the team. So now I'm sure Jim Hiller is going to have a hand in running the Kings power play and he'll set the tone for what the Kings ultimately decide to do offensively, not Newell Brown. Um, but this is, uh, not a hire that I think, um, we should probably be excited about, frankly. Um, look, I'm willing to give Newell Brown a chance to prove himself and maybe with better players on a better team, then, uh, he can do a better job. We'll see. But I do think it is very fair to not be all that excited about this hire. I do think it is very fair to question this hire, um, and, you know, was there really nobody else out there better? Again, he has a he has a strong resume as far as places he's been, how long he's been in the league. Um, but did we really have to go get a Ducks assistant coach to fill our vacancy? Um, I like I said, I, I am not very excited about this hire. Um, I don't have a better name that I could have given you to say, you know, well, they should have they should have hired this guy instead, frankly. Um, but it it doesn't, I'm not sure what the fit is there. I don't know of a relationship that he has with Jim Hiller. Um, we read off his resume. Hiller has coached, you know, in places like the Islanders and the Red Wings uh, and the Maple Leafs and Newell Brown. I, I didn't. I don't think he's been in any of those places, so I'm not sure where they've crossed paths. Um, but obviously, the the Kings felt and Jim Hiller felt that this was the best guy for the for the job, I guess. And so again, Newell Brown uh, will be running the uh, forwards and the power play for the LA Kings next season with, of course, the supervision of head coach Jim Hiller. Uh, up next, I want to talk about a young Kings draft pick that I've been excited about for a little while and why he continues to be potentially the long-term solution in net for the LA Kings. We'll talk about that next here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets to NBA, NHL, and whatever sports you're into. I have bought tickets using game time to NFL and NHL games this past season, and I am a very satisfied customer. The app is super easy to use and easy to navigate. Just go on and tap on the listings, sports, music, shows, and the list of tickets with the best deals. Uh, when you search for those tickets, they save those searches as well. So when you go back and look again, if you're looking to check on maybe the fluctuation in prices, maybe the prices go down as you get closer to the event or not, uh, but you get to see those prices and compare to what they used to be. My favorite feature is getting the panoramic view from the seat you want to buy on the app before you buy it so you know the exact view you're going to get. And if you get the lowest price guaranteed, or you will get the lowest price guaranteed, or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets, NHL tickets, and more at game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem the code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So if you've been paying attention, you probably know the LA Kings have a lot of uncertainty surrounding the goaltending position, both for the present 
and for the future. Not only do we have no idea who the Kings' number one goalie will be next season, but the long-term solution is still not quite clear. We've talked a little bit about Cam Talbot. Very solid numbers last season, especially considering what the Kings have invested in that position financially. There are a lot of other goalies around the league making a lot more money and not performing as well as Cam Talbot did last season, even with his midseason slump. Um, That said, Cam Talbot will turn 37 next month, and he did get replaced in the playoffs by David Riddick. The Kings could upgrade the goaltending position now and in the future with a trade, but if the solution is a cheap free agent goalie, Cam Talbot is the best option for the LA Kings. Eric Portillo is a name you're probably familiar with. We've talked about him off and on on this show when talking about the Ontario Reign. He could be the future in net for the Kings. I would say he certainly at this point in time is probably the best prospect we've got at the moment, Um, but he still has a lot to prove. 23-year-old just wrapped up his first full pro season with the Ontario Reign after a standout career at the University of Michigan. He ended up playing for the Reign in 39 of the team's 72 games, so a little over half the season with the team, and that was in line with how many games he would typically play in a full season in uh, the University of Michigan. I think he had like 42 starts his last year uh, with the Wolverines. Now, looking at his numbers, they were solid. 24-11-3 was the record. Those 24 wins were tied for seventh in the league that has 32 starting goalies. Uh, He had a 2.50 goals against average. That was 13th best in the league, a 9-18 save percentage, sixth best in the league. He also had a fantastic start to the playoffs before he cooled off a little bit, but still all in all, a very solid first pro season for Eric Portillo. Now I would expect next year he goes from playing just over half the games to, I would say at least like 75% of the games, if not more to see if he can handle an NHL like workload as a number one goalie at the AHL level. Now, again, he could be the future net for the Kings. It is possible. Um, I do like his potential. I love his size, 6'6", 230 pounds. Um, But there's still, we still need to see more. He is not ready to come in, I don't believe, next season, unless he were to have maybe just a phenomenal first half of the year and the Kings maybe were uh, having difficulties in that position. Maybe they could give him a look. But I think the plan is, and I think what will happen, is Eric Portillo will get a full, pretty much a full season in the AHL to see how he can handle that workload. And if you can put up similar numbers to what he did in about half a season this year, then I think maybe the following year, maybe you give him a look and see what he can do at the NHL level. There is another goalie who the Kings drafted recently that I have been intrigued by for a little while. Uh, I have mentioned him a couple of times on the show when we've talked about Kings draft picks and prospects, and his name is Hampton Slukinski. He was a fourth round pick of the Kings just last season. He has a long way to go, but he has shown a lot in a little bit amount of time. Uh, He's going to be 19 coming up soon, and he has been dominant, not just good, dominant at every level he's played so far. At War Road High School in Minnesota, he had a record of 28-1-1, a 1.47 goals against average, and a 941 save percentage. Now, War Road High School, you may have heard of it. TJ Oshie famously went there. Um, They are a high school powerhouse in the state of Minnesota. So obviously played for some pretty good teams. Recently, uh, just this week, he was named USHL Goaltender of the Year. He just finished the regular season with a league-leading 28 wins playing for the Fargo Force. He was unbeaten through his first 17 career starts. He finished the season 28-3-0. Slukinski posted a 923 save percentage and a one. 0.86 0.86 goals against average. He had five shutouts, which led all USHL goaltenders. In the playoffs, he backstopped the force to the USHL championship. 12 playoff games, he was 9-3, and 1.69 goals against average, and a 931 save percentage. So his numbers were even better in the postseason and in the regular season, obviously going up against better teams. Um, he's not the biggest goalie in the world, 6'1", 190, but he's 18, so you would think there's still some growing to do potentially. Now, he has committed to playing next season at the University of Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan is not a college hockey powerhouse. They have been to a few Frozen Fours back in the 80s and 90s. They even won it all back in 1991. But it will be interesting to see, now that he's not playing for a 
uh, high school powerhouse now that he's not playing for this really talented USHL team, how he will continue to uh, put up numbers playing for a decent university team by all accounts. So um, we'll see what he does in the future. But like I said, so far, he has not just been good. He's been dominant at every level he's played. If he can keep that going at the collegiate level, at least for save percentage and things like that, um, that would be a very positive sign. But I think he's a guy worth remembering. Uh, the name is certainly a bit unique, Hampton Slukinski. Um, and I usually don't do this, but um, I did happen to notice by coincidence right before I started to record this show that Hampton Slukinski did an interview on the All the King's Men podcast. Um, and, you know, look, there are other podcasts out there that you could say is is in competition with this podcast. I think there's more than enough room to go around for everybody. Um, for a team like the LA Kings, you know, there are probably three or four or five really solid podcasts out there for you to listen to. I would encourage you to listen to all of them and pick and choose which ones you like best. There are pluses and minuses about um, the different shows. The All, all the Kingsmen podcast is obviously affiliated with the LA Kings, so they have great access to have guests on like Hampton Slukinski, who I just can't reach out to um, and, and see if he wants to come on this show, although he is. I did see he is on Twitter. I'm going to reach out to him, but uh, we'll see if, if that happens or not. They've got you know direct access to these guys, and I don't. So that gives them a leg up on getting some really good interviews. At the same time, they are connected to the LA Kings organization, so maybe they don't quite uh, critique Newell Brown the way we did on this show. Maybe we're a little bit more open to be able to mm, speak our mind a little bit more when it comes to, uh, you know, players on the Kings, coaching decisions, general managers, things like that. So there are pluses and minuses to the different shows out there. And like I said, I think there's room for, for all of us. So um, I would encourage you if you want to listen, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to listen to the Hampton Slikinski interview, get a kind of a feel for what kind of kid he is, what he has to say, but that is on the, all the Kings men podcast that was just released earlier today. So um, we'll check that out and we'll definitely keep an eye on Hampton Slikinski. And if you don't want to keep an eye on him, I'll keep an eye on him for you. And we'll report uh, sometime next season, probably how he's doing in his first year of collegiate hockey. But I think he's a guy worth remembering and keeping an eye on. Uh, we do have news on the Kings parting ways uh, with the player. We will get you updated on that next here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Indeed partners you with every step of the hiring process. They find talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match Assessment and virtual interviews. With Indeed Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of qualified candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? Then you need Indeed. All right, so we, we do have some news to pass along uh, on the LA Kings moving on or off of uh, one of their players. Uh, that would be defenseman Kim Nosyainen. He was put on unconditional waivers for the purpose of terminating his contract. He was a fourth-round pick in 2019. Past season, playing for the Ontario Reign, uh, he had nine assists in 52 games, uh, also had two assists in eight playoff games. He's a native of Finland, uh, two goals and 17 assists for 19 points in 105 games spread apart across parts of three seasons playing for the Ontario Reign. So Kim Nosyainen, um, a player that the Kings felt like um, wasn't going to have um, you know much of a future with the organization. Obviously, there's tough decisions to be made this time of year. Who do you re-sign? Who do you let go? Um, certainly, his numbers are pretty pedestrian uh, as a defenseman. Um, so, uh, Kim Nosyainen, fourth-round pick in 2019, no longer going to be a member 
of the Ontario Reign and the LA Kings organization. Uh, certainly in the next week or so, uh, expect to hear more and see more moves made by the LA Kings as they continue to uh, take shape, taking the early steps to take shape towards uh, what the roster is going to look like for next season, not only for the LA Kings, but for the Ontario Reign as well. For you everydayers, those of you that listen to watch Locked on LA Kings every day, coming up on Friday, of course, it is a Kings fan feedback show. Love to get your thoughts on anything and everything involving the LA Kings. Uh, and now that we are in the off season, you're more than welcome to ask questions about pretty much anything, to be honest with you. It doesn't have to be specific to what we've talked about this week, although you certainly could comment on what do you think about the addition of Newell Brown as an assistant head coach or anything else we've talked about. Uh, your thoughts on the goalie situation for the LA Kings now and in the future. We did some player profiles this week. Adrian Kempe uh, was one of them. Um, yeah, any, anything you want to talk about, it is free game, whether it's a serious question, fun question, whatever, uh, during the offseason, it is uh, an opportunity for you to get in whatever questions you want that are LA Kings related. So the uh, email address for that, for the feedback show coming up on Friday, locked on Eddie at gmail.com, E D D I E. And of course, you can always leave your comments on the uh, YouTube episodes if you're watching. Uh, we always appreciate that. Uh, if we don't get enough emails, we'll dip into the uh, the YouTube comments to try and get some uh, some questions and comments as well. Um, so, uh, and it always helps the algorithm if you leave those comments, if you like, if you subscribe, it helps other people to find the show when they just go on uh, YouTube and are looking around for things to watch, like I do when I get in those uh, YouTube rabbit holes and start watching things I never thought I would watch. Uh, we'd also love for you to stay interact with us on Instagram, Twitter, X. We are at Locked on LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you, as always, for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you on Friday. And as always, go Kings go.